This video gives you a quick overview of visualization in 3D Studio Max and what you can see is uh, the 3D model of a swimming pool and the aim is to do to get to visualizations uh, a little bit uh, like uh, like these ones and the first thing we see this uh, building is uh, drawn in AutoCAD I just see if I imported it properly I just measure it and you can see it's 95 centimeters I also just check in my um, unit setup that in this case I'm in centimeters and especially my uh, system units are centimeters so the proportions and the scale of this model is fine. The next thing I will just do is I just go into my render setups and I just preload uh, the render settings from Digitalis and Werfen. I just load my render settings standard mental way presets. Uh, I open them and I just want to have them only for effects uh, to uh, global elimination and for common I don't need it because it just changes the size and everything under common so I'm fine with this one. And uh, the next one uh, I will do is I will just enter a daylight system. I go into systems and uh, enter a daylight system. Important that it's a daylight system, not only the sunlight system, because you also need the sky for the whole thing. And um, exposure value, um, I don't know, I just uh, keep the old one, so I just say no. I just uh, draw my, um, my compass and now my daylight system and my compass I can just scale a little bit it's for me a little bit too uh, too big uh, just need a visual impression and uh, the whole thing I just move to uh, to the left like this next thing I just do I just choose my head and in motion I can just change the location I just go to Europe and I just uh, choose Frankfurt uh, that's fine right now and uh, important I never turn my 3D model I always turn my daylight system in terms of um, um, in terms of my direction and I can also change uh, just the visual thing my orbit so it just looks good in my viewport and I have a really easy way of handle how to handle it and I go just to a time of uh, five o'clock in the afternoon and that's already quite good. To get my first nice uh, rendering visualization examples I have to add materials. So far this whole thing doesn't have any materials. So uh, what I do I just choose all my all my geometry. I just go into uh, geometry and just choose all the geometry and uh, I just open my material editor and I just create one material just a really simple uh, Autodesk uh, wall, uh, wall paint material. Just go into wall paint. Uh, I don't want to have a glossy materials. I just go into uh, these uh, cool white. I change the white probably a little bit to a slightly, a slightly darker value. That's fine. I always use my ambient occlusion with 120. 120 um, diameters and use color from other materials and I just add it to all my all my 3D objects and so the whole thing looks like this whitish grayish and what I already did in my scene before I just uh, organized my scene and my um, uh, selection sets which are really handy so I just went into my selection set I have one selection for all my windows and uh, for my roof and for my walls and things like this. So what I do is I just uh, choose my windows, uh, really important, and in my windows I just create a new material. I just go into get material again and under my Autodesk um, the material library I find this glass I go into glazing and I just use a really simple uh, clear uh, glazing and I will attach it to my windows okay now we are already quite far we can just try our first visualization and um, uh, what I have to do is uh, before I just obviously have to uh, use my exposure control to uh, adjust it to my um, daylight system. I just choose my viewport here on my right side 
and I go into render preview and just see what comes out of this. Okay, here we go. Uh, it looks a little bit dark, so um, I just increase my expo exposure to a value of uh, uh, nine point nine point five. I just go into my window setups and we will just make our first test visualization uh, not too big, uh, probably I would have passed computer with 800 by 572 and uh, yeah, let's have a look at this, choose the right viewport and let's go. Okay, and this is what it looks like, already not bad for my first uh, first trial. What I obviously can do is I can just change uh, my uh, daylight system and if I just move my head, you can uh, just see in my little window that uh, there's a point where my daylight uh, comes through the window, which is actually uh, quite nice. And we just uh, make another visualization. And here I changed uh, the direction of my light. I also changed uh, a little bit uh, the white point, the cavern of my um, of my exposure control, and ex uh, increased a little bit the exposure value. And what you can see right now that there are so small little uh, little dots. Uh, this sometimes can happen. That means that not enough light comes through your windows. You have two options actually for this. The first option is you just uh, apply uh, in front of every important window something like a mental way sky portals. I already did this in my scene, so you can see my mental way uh, sky portals. I just move on a little bit. These are my mental way sky portals, and it's important that this um, arrow shows uh, into. Uh, the direction of the light into where it should increase the amount of photons so from the outside to the inside you can just see that you can also change this direction uh, and obviously uh, you can see that uh, most of them are just instances and sky portals you just found under under create uh, lights sky portals and you can just uh, use mental way sky portals uh, best case use your auto grid and with your auto grid you can just draw them wherever you want to uh, have them on your windows and they should probably just fit on your glass of the windows that's the best position where you can uh, where, you, where you should use them okay here is uh, what it looks like and it looks much better it's a really smooth surface but there's one thing this visualization nearly took uh, six minutes and the other one only took uh, 10 seconds. So uh, uh, there's something wrong and uh, what you should do is you should only use your sky portals at, at positions where you actually need them. Okay, here we go. Uh, instead of uh, six minutes, it just took me uh, four uh, minutes uh, 50. But uh, if you think about this for this scene, I start to kind of like my first result because it was only done in 10 and 15 seconds but there is one alternative and it's uh, sometimes uh, in uh, some things the sky portals really make sense but it's probably still like this if I just open my uh, light lister you can just still see that there are still quite many sky portals uh, in my scene I'm probably still uh, used to many sky portals so uh, it's the amount of sky portals uh, so uh, see that you don't use too many and uh, some uh, scenes with big windows where a lot of uh, daylight comes into your scene, you don't need sky portals at all. What you can do with this scene, you can also just try different kind of render settings. If I just go into my uh, render setup, uh, you can try uh, different uh, presets of Digitalis and Varfa. I just go into load and I just load this uh, preset. Uh, higher for a uh, few light uh, mental way render presets and I just want to have it uh, for effects for render elements and I don't want to have it for environment because I'm quite happy with my exposure controller I also, also don't want to change the side of my visualization I just load this right now and there are very few changes in my uh, global illumination especially in my final gather and if I just uh, make another visualization of this um, 
viewport. We just have a look at this in some seconds. Okay, uh, for this scene it works uh, quite well. It only took me 2 minutes uh, 15 and it looks quite similar to the solution of my sky portals actually. It looks better than my uh, first example without sky portals and with my lower window settings, but I just see that this uh, still works much uh, faster. So for all my other tests, I just use a low setting and if I just go to final solution, then I just use my uh, higher settings and I know that all these little, uh, little dots and all these um, spots will actually go. Okay, let's have a look at the next topic uh, and let's have a look at uh, the materials in my scene. So for this only the material glass and uh, glazing and uh, one simple wall paint material. Uh, I just want to do very few things. I just choose my, um, my floor right now here. I just look into isolate selection, selection what this actually looks like. And all my uh, all my objects need something like UVW map. Uh, I already had it before. I just add it again. I just use my settings uh, box, which is quite important. And I always use uh, right now with this example uh, real world map size. And uh, I just want to have a tiling on this. So what I actually do is I just go into my uh, a material editor, I just add a material, I just choose a Mandelware material from my Autodesk material library, I go into ceramic, I go into tiling and I just choose these square mosaic uh, blue tiles uh, which I think fit quite well and uh, like always uh, I go and switch on ambient occlusion, I take a maximum distance of 120 which I think looks uh, looks quite good. I go and to use uh, a color from other materials and uh, I apply this material and you can't see this in the viewport right now. You always have to switch on show shaded material viewport and here we go and this already looks quite good. If you want to change the size uh, then um, you just have to go into your mapping. I just do this now and go into the mapping uh, and uh, I can also have a look at this mappings if I just choose my source and once go on this file name I can just see my mapping and my uh, little uh, viewport window and I can change it. I can just say that this example uh, has uh, now not the size of 70 centimeters. I just want to make it bigger and just say in total it has uh, 200 centimeters. And uh, here we go, I just changed this and you can already see that it just changed in the viewport and obviously you can also rotate this, that makes so much sense right now, I just rotate this right now and uh, 40, uh, 45 degrees, I just go into zero again and um, so you can already see what this does to my um, tiling. Okay, this is what it looks like again with my standard render presets and it now again only took 24 seconds. Uh, just some little uh, things which are not optimized, but anyhow we can change this later. Okay, um, if we for example want, to th uh, want that these corners have a different kind of material, I just add uh, something like an edit poly on top. And on top of my material uh, out of uh, this ceramic, I just open my material map browser. I go into my materials, and that's the first time that I choose the standard material. I just choose the multi sub object material, and it asks me if I want to keep the old material as a sub material. Yes, I want this, and I only want to have two different kind of uh, materials. Here we go. Okay, here we go. It already looks quite good, actually. Okay, here we go. You can see the two different kind of visualization. This is with my high settings of uh, uh, low light. It took only 11 minutes and this one already only took uh, less than one minute. You can definitely see a big difference between these visualizations, especially in Matani. But actually uh, it's uh, just not worth doing uh, using these high settings for my, for, for my test renderings. So what you can see is uh, some other test winnings with, my, uh, with the same scene with different kind of materials and a little bit of depth of field. 
And the last thing we want to look at uh, how to do a visualization uh, with artificial light. And uh, I do something quite extreme right now. I just go into my um, uh, light lister and I just switch off my daylight system and uh, to have this completely dark actually because if you go on uh, my render view you can just uh, see a little bit of something here we go you also have to switch off uh, use map and if I just go into my render view again and then you can see that it's completely dark okay and this is what we actually want Okay, I give, just give you one quick example of how to add um, artificial light into your scene. I'm just going to create and I just add, um, add a free light in my scene. That's this one. And in my settings, I don't change anything in terms of my shadows. Uh, what I would like to use, I would like to have something like a fluorescent tube uh, tube, and uh, what I have to go I have to ch change the color I just want to have a Kelvin color temperature of 2700 uh, uh, Kelvin and uh, my candlelight I think is uh, fine and in emit light I just go into um, into cylinder and uh, I have a length of 1 meter uh, 50 centimeters really long one actually and a radius of um, uh, of uh, 2.5 centimeters. And uh, what I would like to have, I would to see like to see my um, fluorescence tubes, uh, which I can achieve if I just go into light shave visible in renderer. And uh, in my viewport, I just change from realistic to already have an idea of uh, of the final result. Okay, this is my tube. I just turn my tube a little bit uh, like this and uh, let's see where it is actually in my scene. Okay, I just move it to the left and uh, we can see our scene but you can still can't see a result in my viewport. So what I have to do is I just have to check my settings. I go into light and shadow and say illuminate with scene lights and uh, now it already looks uh, much better. Okay, I take this light and I just copy this light as an instance several times in my scene, um, like this. I just say uh, four times. So we already have uh, some of these lights. I just uh, select these lights. I just enter pH so I can choose my photomatic web lights uh, like this and I just copy them also to the other side of my bath uh, also like an instance and uh, this is already this already looks quite good I go into my render preview okay here's my result and uh, it is a little bit uh, too dark I just change my exposure value to 6.5 and I should probably adjust a little bit my white point, my uh, cave and my color temperature to for example like 4000 and this looks already really good and with this I already do my first test running. Okay after four minutes you can see the first result of my um, artificial light running. I think it already looks uh, quite good. You can see uh, the lights because I used uh, my uh, uh, my setting your uh, light shape visible and rendering and if you're happy with your final result then you just go into your render setup you could go for a different preset to increase the quality but uh, I think I'm fine with this so the only thing you just do you just uh, um, increase uh, the dimensions of your output size and just start your final visualization. Thanks for watching.